I think the challenge just for leaders in business today is that a lot of the things that we're going to cope with are all philosophical questions. Um, I lived many years as a hardcore capitalist, building my companies, making a lot of money, losing a lot of money. And what I learned was that there are new challenges ahead. The world is not how it used to be. And I was always interested in the art of philosophy or philosophical contemplation, but I didn't really know what to do with it. I was more tied into leadership methodologies, management methodologies, and I wanted to understand the capitalistic world that we live in. Um, I sold my companies and I started to dig deeper into philosophy. And that's where I saw that a lot of these things that are hidden in plain sight from ancient wisdom um, are so much more relevant today than you might think. I think all of the challenges ahead are to be solved with philosophical questioning or methodologies. So I thought, you know, what would these genius thinkers of the past, Plato, Aristotle, Wittgenstein, Nietzsche, what would they be thinking if they were living today? So I decided to rescue these secrets and trying to project them on to the 21st century. I've always been interested in technology and I always want to understand what is the science and technology of tomorrow. So if I pair those two and project them onto today, then I have, for me, a world view on how things are going. I think today this is what leaders need. They need philosophical contemplation. Of course there is, you know, practical philosophy also in the academic philosophy, but for me it was pairing these old models uh, and also pairing the philosophy then to the leadership and management frameworks that we have and try to come up with some kind of practical applied philosophy. I think we have to live philosophy much more than just read and talk about it. Um, and that's it. this is how I define for me what practical applied philosophy is and also what a business philosopher is. Um, starting this journey and it very much feel as a beginning still um, how to pair business and the world of philosophy. Today we, we certainly, because of the speed, we feel there are things going on. Uh, in the Western world or, or, or in the, I would say, the luckier part of the world, we are enjoying our Chardonnay and canapes and talking about, you know, the crisis. I, I think we are confronted with two existential challenges that we have to figure out how to, to solve or cope with within the next 10 years. And this is a very short time period. We feel it. We, we feel that uh, there is an ecological breakdown, a collapse, if you like. It's falling apart. And we have to figure out how to cope with that. And the other part, the existential challenge, is how do we cope with exponential technologies? How do we want to live with these technologies that we create? Just because we can does not mean we should. So change is on the table for every single one of us every single day. So we need to change. We need to be a part of the change and we all need to become leaders of change. So it's not about one or two or someone, it's about all of us doing a little bit to create a world, to improvise a world that we want to live in. And, and for that we need a conscious revolution. We need to be, have awareness of what we are doing. Yeah, leading a successful company and adapting new skills of the future, I, I think we also find a lot of these in the core of philosophy. Um, I think we need to learn how to question everything. Ten years from now, we will not be looking for software engineers like we do today, but also for you know, philosophers that understand the political structures or the business world in general that can come in and challenge and question everything. Uh, we need to learn how to communicate and collaborate better, the rhetoric, the ethos, pathos, logos, and how to you know, tell our stories and how to include people. Uh, we need to be more creative. And, and when I say so, uh, we need to explore topics where we can experience stuff, not just consume information or try to learn stuff, but to really experience it. Uh, and the new skills that leaders need are obviously very simple. How to work with human beings. How do we cope with people? And that's the biggest challenge for leaders today. An organization is not only successful with great leaders, I also think we seem cut some kind of management, and we need someone that is a hardcore you know, executor that wants to get things done. So maybe the new model is having a chief leadership officer, a chief management officer, and a chief execution officer, and everything else is the same structure and level, driven by projects. The project is the new boss of the organization. The task that you have is your singular responsibility. That's what 
what we do. Uh, and I think this is the organization form that we will see in the gig economy, where we have microtransactions and things change. But obviously, we need to learn how to adapt new environments or new changes, how to you know, cope with this speed, and also to expect the unexpected. And I think ethics is a big part of it. You know, having ethical organizations is on the agenda today. We see a lot of great websites on sustainability and stuff like that. It's time to start to feel it. Uh, and if the board and the leaders of today feel it, the organization will adapt it because people will only tap into it, not because of what the leaders say or do, but how the leader make an individual or a human being feel. And that is the essential part of being a leader. You tap into and you guide and you show them how to do it, but you also make them feel something, that you want to be a part of a journey. They want to be a part of your story and they want to join you and they want to go through the change, whether it's good or bad, but you stick together and then you move on.